The World Health Organization has stated that smoking can increase an individual's risk of developing severe disease if he or she becomes infected with COVID-19. Older people and those with underlying medical problems like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and chronic respiratory disease are more likely to develop serious illness. On Skype with us this morning is consultant physician and pulmonologist, Dr. Althea Akar Stewart. Morning, Doc. Hi, morning, Dalia. Morning, Dave. <laughs> well, people said Dave, it's people say actually doing Dave. my full name. And morning to your listeners. Good morning. Good morning to you. And to us. Uh, Doc, I think we, we, we have to start, first of all, with how smoking affects the lungs in general before we get into the specifics. Because we keep uh, hearing, you know, smoking can, ruin, can do the smoking, but, but what really does it do? Smoking is one of the most potent agents that cause damage to the lungs. And unfortunately, the effect of cigarette smoke or tobacco on the lungs doesn't occur right away. It takes years. The smoker who continues smoking for years and years, eventually the effects, dam the effects will occur. It damages the airways. It causes damage to the, to the air sacs, which become distended. And in its own way, it also affects the natural immunity of the lungs to protect against infection. The long-term consequence of smoking, we all know the, the association with lung cancer, but the association with another lung disease, which is very common, called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which people mistake many times for asthma. Oh. What's the difference between that and asthma? Good question. The difference between chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is usually that in, the, in those patients, the damage done from chronic cigarette smoke is irreversible. They wheeze like the asthmatic, but whereas I can improve the asthmatic symptoms with, its, with the nebulizer salbutamol, in the patient with chronic lung disease, the, the inflammation that exists is irreversible. So the damage is done, and the only way you can put a halt to the progression of your lung disease is to quit smoking. Yeah. So in a time like COVID, where, where the lungs is particularly susceptible, um, how do smokers put themselves at a disadvantage? Smokers put themselves at a disadvantage in many ways. If we want to start off with a simple, very simple, you might even find it laughable. Remember, we keep on saying that COVID-19, the coronavirus, is spread by droplets. And can guarantee you that every cigarette smoker is not going to wash his hands before he lights up. And the simple thing, holding the cigarettes, the fact that you're close to your mouth, touching your face, is one way of transmitting the virus. Simple, but it's practical. The next thing is that if I have been a smoker for many, many years, chances are I have developed complications from chronic tobacco use. These will include cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, um, diabetes. And the problem I now face is that because of these complications, I have put myself at increased risk of a serious infection from the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Is there a silver lining in all this for smokers because they're, they're susceptible to all of these, um, well, the coronavirus, so to speak. Is there any silver lining for them? Everything, every cloud has a silver lining. The silver lining is that at this point, it's never too late to stop smoking. So if you stop smoking, you will arrest the progression of your disease, but you cannot change what damage has already been done. The other silver lining is that you know, know that you are aware of the fact that I have other complications from my many years of tobacco use. I can be more proactive with my health, my immunizations, my pneumonia shot, my flu vaccine, my cardiovascular checkup, controlling my hypertension. If this is the silver lining that will make me more proactive about my own health, then that is a good thing, wouldn't you say so? <laughs> it absolutely yeah, it is. is. We're talking about lungs, but you said something a while ago, and I'm curious. Um, has smoking been linked to any other type of chronic disease? You said hypertension. Oh, uh, yes. 
Oh, yes, Dahlia. Smoking has been named in at least four chronic diseases. And you know, in our Jamaican society, the chronic non-communicable diseases are that is a burden that we carry on our health system. Smoking is tobacco use is linked to cardiovascular disease. It causes coronary artery disease. And as a result of that, people are at increased risk of angina, heart failure, heart attacks. It is linked to lung cancer. And we know that even though we have become so good at the detection of lung cancer, that is one of those that we have not improved to the point where we can guarantee you a good outcome. Mm -hmm. It is linked with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which unfortunately, we say that it causes the shortness of breath and impinges on your quality of life very badly. So tobacco use by itself is linked with a whole slew of chronic non-communicable diseases. I know overseas, I don't know if that's the case here, more and more research is being done on vaping and how mm. vaping is also affecting the lungs. I, I don't know if you want to share any, any that's insight. That's an excellent question, Delia. Why is it an excellent question? Because whether or not we want to be aware of it, vapors, vaping has problems, it cannot it can cause lung disease. What is also interesting with vaping is that I may attract a younger population of, of people who enjoy vaping. I could should also use this opportunity of mentioning another young, another habit. People love to use the hookah or water pipes. It's a very popular thing in some of these Mediterranean restaurants. But you will understand that with Corona, that is a no-no at this time because you will transmit the you can transmit the virus by passing that water pipe around. And whereas you, you mentioned vaping and vaping, I spoke about young people. Let me pause here to remind you of a problem. Grabber is a huge problem among our younger population because what they do is they use the tobacco with the marijuana and they use that and they make their, their grabber. The problem we will face in another few years is that the effect of the chronic tobacco use in that grabber will start to affect the lungs of our younger, of our young people. I'm, I'm sorry to keep coming in before doing, but you know you raised something because I've seen people smoking, even when they're, they're smoking a spliff, and them take a draw and then them friends say, give me a draw. And then they extend it to them as well. So, so here we have with COVID, that's not, that's not a great practice. That's to out. That's out. That community, that, that is only the setup for community transmission. That's out. Yeah. Do you think Jamaicans are heeding the warnings? I think that they are beginning to understand there will always be a population of people who the, 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 the seriousness of it has not fully reached them. But I think the government is doing a fantastic effort at public education, public information. And I think we owe it to each other, those of us who realize the impact of this disease, to, and to impress on our, our friends and others who we see doing things that are wrong. Protect yourself. So I think it's, it's, we're, we're trying. Yeah. As a pulmonologist, Doc, I, I, I expect with COVID-19, um, your, your knowledge has been called on a lot, I, I, I suspect. What's the pulmonologist's role when something like this happens, a pandemic like COVID? Well, the pulmonologist works with the, with the ICU team to recognize the patients who have infection and who have the potential First of all, to recognize, but also have the potential for a very serious outcome. Mm -hmm. So what we will do, we worked, it's a, it's a team effort. It's not a one-man thing. The team, the pulmonologists, the intensivists, the, in, the internal medicine, the public health, we get together, we, all, we recognize, we diagnose, we image where possible, and we intervene with therapy, with a supportive therapy to help these patients through, with the, the ventilation and drugs that we have available from the other studies that we can use to assist the, in these patients and reduce the inflammation in the lungs, which comes from the COVID infection. You speak about assistance. How will people get in touch with you? How can they get in touch with you to get treatment? 
Well, the, the Ministry of Health has put out the, the lines that we pe people need to use, that in case there is a problem, you can contact the Ministry of Health through these lines, and then you will be shepherded to the appropriate agency where the team, pulmonologists, the, the emergency medicine, everybody is set up. I must pause, though, because we are having a little problem with those lines. So we need to, I think the ministry is going to have to really um, sharpen up on making sure those lines are working, because that is what the population is going to use to get help. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Doc, for speaking with us. I know you're busy, so we appreciate that you've taken the time to um, speak with us this morning on Smile Jamaica. Thank you so much for this opportunity. All right. And I want to um, reinforce... Um, that right now, if you know, you might have watched that interview and thought, oh my gosh, I need to quit smoking. If you need help to quit smoking, you may contact the National Council on Drug Abuse. They are 1 866 564 HELP. So you can call them 876 564 HELP and they will assist you. Dr. Althea Akar Stewart, consultant physician and pulmonologist, speaking to us there. Smile continues after this break. That's 10 minutes to your health. We'll do it again next week, Thursday.